Hello, so in this video we're going to look at measures of relationships uh, between two variables. Uh, particularly we're going to look at two that, that measure the, the strength or the degree of linear uh, relationship, uh, covariance and coefficient of correlation. So it's important to note if I were to produce a scatter plot of any two variables, x and y, what I mean by linear association is that that scatter plot is going to look something something like this. Now, so there I have a positive uh, positive linear relationship or maybe it'll look something like this. We have a fairly strong negative linear relationship. Imagine that that's a straight line, <laughs> a nice straight line uh, relationship between these two variables. What it won't, uh, what these won't identify is whether or not there is a nonlinear relationship. So maybe I'll have a, d a scatter plot that looks something like this, um, in, in which case, you know, clearly a relationship exists. It looks something like this, uh, but it's not a linear relationship. It's not a straight line relationship. So, each of these metrics, each of these measures, uh, are only going to be measuring the the degree or the strength of a linear relationship. Okay, so that's what we're going to work with. Non-linear stuff, uh, we'll maybe get to in uh, another video much much later on. So for now, let's uh, let's just look at these two. Uh, I have a data set here where I have uh, some students were asked, how many hours did you study before an exam? Uh, two days before an exam. I can only imagine that even these numbers are probably exaggerated. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so I have my data set. I've named each one X and Y. I didn't put any thought into this. This was just sort of a random naming. There's no, uh, no method to, to what I've chosen there. Uh, some little shortcuts that I've given in this in this data set here. I've provided the sample means and the sample standard deviations. Uh, that is just going to really accelerate our, our calculations. Um, make sure if you're ever working with a problem like this on an exam or an assignment or something, make sure that what you're given in that uh, in that problem is what you need. Sometimes a question like this, instead of having uh, the stand standard deviation, it'll give you the variance. So if you were to be given the variance, you have to make sure that what you need is a sample standard deviation, so make sure you transform those those variables accordingly. Uh, it's sometimes a mean little trick that I do to my students, maybe other instructors do, just to make sure that students are paying attention to the problem, right? And that you understand uh, the nature of the equations and, and what it is that you need uh, in order to perform these calculations. If a formula uh, requires you to enter a standard deviation, don't enter a variance. Just make sure that you pay close attention to what information is given in the problem and what information is needed uh, in the formulas. Okay, so let's get started with the covariance. So the notation that you're going to see is something like this. So SXY, notice it's kind of a combination of what we have here, SX and SY, individual standard deviations. SXY is what we call the covariance, and it is, how can we say, the average of the product of the deviations from the mean for each variable. Whew, that sounds awful. I say that to make this next thing look a little bit easier. So what we're looking at, we need the deviations for each variable. So there's the difference between each, each observation x, each data point x and its mean, and we're looking at the product of these deviations. So this is yi minus y bar. So we're looking at the, the product of the deviations from the mean for each variable, and then we're adding all of these together. i equals 1 through n. Here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So n equals 5 observations. So now we're adding together the products of all of these deviations from the mean. Sounds tedious, I know. And then we divided by n minus 1. 
and that will give us our covariance. So once we have this, this number can be positive, it can be negative, which is indicative of a positive relationship or a negative relationship, but it can really be of any size. And the, the larger it is in absolute value, uh, the stronger is that relationship. If it's zero, well, there's no relationship. And as we move away from zero, it's increasingly positive or increasingly negative. Um, but it can really be any value. So to make it easier to kind of interpret the, the, the strength of that relationship. Uh, a, a more commonly used measure of linear association is this coefficient of correlation. The notation there is little r, x, y. Again, x, y, it's a relationship between these two variables. And it uses the covariance in the numerator, so that's why we're going to calculate that first, divided by the product of the two sample standard deviations. And so that's why those become useful here. Now this, this ratio has a range of negative one to one. So now we can see, well, if it's negative one, then that scatter plot, it's a perfect linear relationship. There's one, there's, so this would be that scatter plot, these dots, and that would be a perfect negative relationship. If it were a positive one at the other extreme, then I have a scatter plot that looks something like this, and it's a perfect positive relationship. Uh, if it's zero, then there's no relationship. Something more typical is maybe, you know, some scattering of observations like this, where it's positive, but probably not perfectly positive. So let's get through these calculations and uh, see what we end up with. I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit here. I need to keep my data. So I'm gonna produce three columns. Uh, let's see, okay, three columns of data. The first column will be these differences, uh, x, i, x bar. The next column, so these are just my headers. This will be the differences y, i minus y bar. And the third column will be the product of the first two. And then we're gonna have five of those products, one for each uh, of the observations. And then we're gonna add all of those up. And somewhere down here uh, is where we will calculate the numerator for that covariance uh, calculation. So, so let's get started. So I'm gonna start with the first data point here, 2.6. And as long as I'm working with variable X, in this case, uh, number of hours studied, I have to make sure to use the right mean, so this is gonna be x bar. So the first calculation, I'll just write out the first and then everything else repeats. So this first calculation is 2.6 minus 3.6, so that's just negative one, okay? The next one that I'm gonna do, still 3.6, but now it's gonna be 3.8. I guess I'll write this one down too. 3.8 minus 3.6. And so this is going to be point, uh, point 0.2. Okay, so now let's, uh, let me get the calculator out here. Oops. So the next one is 4.7 minus 3.6. So this is 1.1. Okay, and next, 5.2 minus 3.6 again. So that's 1.6. And the last one, 1 1.6 minus 3.6, so well, that's just minus two. Okay, so there we have our five differences for the x variable. Now we do the same thing for the y variable. These are so tedious, aren't they? That's the fun of statistics. Many, many, many small little calculations. So now I'm going to begin here, 75. So this one is going to be 75 minus, and now we're working with this mean here, 78.8, 78.8. So this one is going to be 3.8. And now I'm going to carry on. So let's, uh, next one is 78, minus 78.8. Okay, negative 0.8. And carrying on, the next one I'm at 90, minus 
and 81 minus 78.8, 2.2, and the very last one is 70 minus 78.8, so negative 8.8, good. And now this next one is where we're going to multiply these together, so we have to make sure we keep our rows uh, in line so that we don't accidentally multiply negative 1 by negative 0.8 or something like this. So we need to keep everything in line. And so negative 1 times 3.8, so this is going to be, oh that would be a negative 3.8. That's another easy mistake to make as well. This should be a negative 3.8. Usually I rely on my students to catch these little mistakes that I make on these calculations. Now I have to rely on myself, that's harder to do. Okay, here we go. So negative one times 3.8, well that's just gonna be 3.8. Two times negative eight, that'll be negative 16. Let's see this next one. 1.1 times 11.2, 1.2, times 2.2, .2, and finally negative 2 times negative 8.8, .8, 17.6. Okay, now we just have to add all of these up to get our numerator, 3.8 plus negative 0.16 plus 12.32 plus 3.52 plus 17.6, 37.08. Okay, so there's finally our numerator here, 37.08 divided by, now we need to look at uh, our sample size, it's 5 minus 1, so that's just going to be 4, and 37.08 divided by 4, 9.27. Okay, Whew. so after all of that, now we have our covariance. So from this I can see, well, it's a positive relationship, so that means the more people study, the more hours spent studying before the exam tends to, tends to be related to a higher grade. Um, how much higher? What's the strength of that relationship? The covariances, as I said before, it's a little bit hard to see the strength of that relationship. I know nine is a positive number. It's not a, it's not a tiny positive number, so there's some strength in that relationship, but the covariance can take on any number any value, and so it's hard to really get some uh, real idea of the strength of that relationship. So if we use the coefficient uh, of correlation, well, this is limited between negative one and one, from perfectly negative to perfectly positive. So this makes it a little bit easier to sort of interpret and to grasp the strength of that relationship. So here I have my covariance, we just calculated as 9.27, divided by the product uh, of my sample standard deviations, so that's 1.5 times 7.5. So let's get the calculator again. So that's uh, 9.27 divided by, I'm just gonna use brackets here, 1.5 times 7.5. So that is 8.24, 0 0.824. So now this gives us maybe a little better idea of the strength. If it were zero, it would be no relationship. If it were a perfect one, it would be a perfectly positive relationship. So a 0.82, that's a pretty strong positive relationship. It's not perfect, but at least here I can say, well, that that's a fairly strong positive relationship. The more people tend to study, uh, the better they perform on, on that midterm. So maybe that's a good reason to study more. Now, keep in mind, we've identified that a 
correlation exists, we haven't identified anything to do with causation. I can't say the hour studied causes a higher midterm grade. Maybe it does. In our minds, it sounds like it probably does. But this measure of correlation is limited only to correlation. We can't draw conclusions based on causation to say that this causes this. Here, all I've said is, all I can say is that there's a very strong positive correlation between the number of hours studied and midterm grade. Okay, good. I hope that helps you uh, calculating these covariance and correlation, and hopefully a little bit um, a little bit easier to interpret them now. Thanks for watching.